the topic which I wanted to bring to you is an organizational excellence. And it's very important uh, right now uh, because sometimes we uh, think of organizational excellence is for only big organizations, but it's it's very relevant to what I see around businesses coming up, startups, small and medium scale businesses, and also big businesses. So we will talk a little bit about this uh, today. But what I am trying to bring here is knowledge uh, condensed, uh, some bits of information condensed from two very, very, very great organizations. Okay, uh, and uh, I'll take a minute to explain about this. And these two organizations you see on your screen, one is the Shingo Institute. Okay, and it's a worldwide, it's a U, uh, John Huntsman School of Business in Utah State University, which is, uh, which I will talk about a little bit. And the second is the organization in India, uh, organization, the Indian operations, which I had is the IFESO Consulting. So uh, these two organizations all working in this area. And in the next uh, few minutes, I will try to sort of condense some of the key learning, which can be taken away by the by this participants of this uh, gathering today. See, Huntsman, John Huntsman School uh, in, in Utah State University in U.S. has been giving uh, a Shingo Prize. This is, prize is often called as the Nobel Prize of Excellence. Okay, it's been for there for 25, 30 years. Uh, it's been uh, recognized. It's given to the some of the top companies, the best of the best companies. Earlier, it was very focused on America because it was funded by America. Uh, businesses and uh, academics uh, and government, but now it's available globally for people to learn and to apply operational excellence uh, things. So that's this institute does a lot of research in this field uh, in, in conducting MBA programs and PhD programs and things like that. So that's one institute and uh, its mission solely is to improve uh, organizational excellence and help companies really become great uh, in this field. And, I, and it's a passion for me because I think we in India need to start off study these type of things available. It means they are not expensive. They are available for things and all businesses, small and big, can actually benefit from this cutting edge research which is done, uh, performing uh, organizational assessments and all of that can be sort of a good source of knowledge for people in India to build their business businesses and take them to the world class level. So that is one thing. The second company, which is my company, which I had uh, in India, but it's a global company. We are headquartered in Paris, uh, been here for almost 40 years uh, in a field of operational excellence and support some of the top company names you would imagine uh, in the world. We, we work in all, almost 70, 75 countries. Uh, around the globe from 20, 30 offices now uh, there. So everywhere in Europe, America, North, South America, you can see. In India, we have our office in Gurgaon. And we support from India, uh, Indian region, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India, and also a complete African region. So Western Africa, South Africa, we have a lot of engagement there. So these two companies have been developing... Uh, how to uh, help organizations become really great and how do they effectively are able to achieve the purpose for which they are existing and how do they uh, apply and create cultures which can sustain the excellence uh, in there. So that's what uh, uh, the topic right now is and I will share some of these insights uh, uh, so that you can take some of these and apply to your own businesses. Uh, so, uh, Shingo Award uh, is, uh, I told, is an award which is given, but a lot of companies, even in India, we have the silver medallion for one or two, but never had a Shingo Award given to an Indian company, which we are really waiting for some of the companies really become the best in the world to get these awards. So, that's an endeavor and a passion we have to do. So, what happened is for 25, 30 years, uh, Shingo has been uh, institute has been studying and giving this award but sometime back they started to get complaint from people that 
the companies which we had awarded uh, no longer after some time remain at the level of excellence which they with at the point where they were awarded and this happens in our companies also we get uh, tpm excellence awards we get deming awards but after some time once the award is there we start seeing a gradual fall in the excellence of the companies and so they peak up and then go down so there was a huge amount of research and uh, endeavor put in at a global level to understand what makes the company great not only making them great but also to stay at the level of the greatness uh, which they are there so that they don't decline uh, down and that's what uh, this research came up and they condensed it uh, many years back to a model which is called a shingo model and it's a very popular world famous for companies which endeavor to become the best of the best uh, companies to follow that model and i'll give you a brief synopsis of that today to look at what are the elements in this and you would like to take back and, and all much of this is also available online uh, you can go to shingo.org and look at it or you can google uh, operational excellence and many aspects you will see uh, there the idea is to get this knowledge and implement in your own organizations and it can be any type of organization that we start calling a enterprise organization uh, uh, excellence which can involve a big uh, organization with many many different organizational units and it can be in service can be in manufacturing can be in hospitality or e-commerce any any way so the starting point for this discussion is around why do the organizations exist? Uh, every organization has a purpose and its clarity of that purpose is extremely important that why do we exist? Uh, and to, to meet that purpose, we have to get results in the areas and all of us at senior levels and middle levels or in organizations are actually responsible to get results for our organizations, even business uh, startups, even uh, even in service sector, anywhere, it's about results. Now, we are talking right now in this forum, maybe purely of business, but even social organization, government organizations have to deliver some results. So results become a very, very important part of this. And if you see uh, uh, our business plans, we, you see various uh, 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 documents we have it all talks about the results we are planning to achieve that's how we get our fundings and our investments all of that so we in business organizations we focus more on creating our shareholder value we talk about profitability we talk about market share all those uh, financial and non-financial uh, matrices to achieve those results and all of us endeavor to put that but how do we achieve the results Simply, we use tools and systems to achieve the results. Means uh, we have sometimes in manufacturing organization, we put down production lines, we have equipment in service sectors, we in hospitals, we have diagnostic labs, we have uh, uh, diagnostic tools, we have uh, systems of nursing, paramedics, all those things we also have in IT, uh, in construction, we I was hearing, we have tools and we have systems. Now, the, the point here is that we focus on this to think about our business. When, whenever we talk about changing results or getting different results, we start talking about uh, putting new, new tools into the system. So that, 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 and that can, is evident from your business plans. Means every time you have business plans, you only talk about tools, new tools, new systems, uh, to be put and the investments and uh, money required to put those and what type of revenues you will get out of that. But a very important learning is that there is a very interest, important part missing in these things because we do not focus on who uses the tools, who uses the systems or who actually designs and specifies what we need for these systems and tools and who is going to get the benefit out of this there. And that is the domain of which is in between, which is, you could have guessed already, is about people. And if 
if we do not take those people into our our consideration we miss a very important point and i i see that means uh, today also i have i have many companies i have visited and i have been asked to help and support where people have put a lot of money to build new systems and today uh, nowadays it's more about digital system they put new analytics uh, tools in place they put new uh, uh, industry 4.0 iot systems in place but still struggle to get the results out of them because they do not understand that just by putting a uh, very advanced technology or putting advanced systems in place will not sustain results it's about a lot about more about people who are working who are going to use those so that is an one element which has been identified important and put in this and a very very key element uh, into this and the point which again i wanted to stress here is that who affects this the 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 idea when we talk about people we talk about culture we talk about behaviors of these people now who impacts the most this culture if you go to many organization even senior managers come and tell you that oh we don't have this culture this will not work in our company even in yesterday i was talking to a construction site uh, they say oh our culture is very different we have these temporary people coming in they don't follow the system they cannot have this rule and guidance but everybody they forget that the senior executive the leaders the owners of these companies have a direct responsibility of creating that culture the culture is something because we do not look after that culture the culture starts sort of dominating us and if you see read uh, a lot of people uh, there and some people who have done a lot of work in this like edwin chin uh, some of you must have read his uh, his books is that he thinks that the real the so only thing of real importance the leaders do is to create and manage culture if you do not manage culture it manages you and you may not even be aware of the extent with which this is happening and this is so often true and so often we see people blame culture but they do not take ownership of that culture so my message here is the first mass a key message is that culture is very critical for success of your business do not ignore it the second important part is that you as leaders have to own this culture you create the culture like a a father in a camp in a family creates or mother parents create the culture in which we we have to which drives the family culture the owners the leaders have to own this culture and they have to put down effort to put uh, make this culture in which they can grow and sustain and Uh, actually have the results which they are looking for and this culture is demonstrated the way how do you know what is the culture is by the the way people behave in those organization the way, way people react to uh, to the situations on risks they uh, the way uh, they solve problems the way they interact with each other the way the way they the you can feel into the organization the way they support each other or the way they meet customers expectations so all of that behaviors of the people uh, demonstrate the culture and cultural elements also in define how the people will actually behave means you can imagine i give a small example is if you have a culture in which means problem power hungriness is there means people are the culture has means everybody wants to be powerful and that is being rewarded what type of behavior you will see means people will hide information people will backstab they will start behaving rudely sometimes in the meetings apart from it if you have a culture where teamwork is there or humility is there the people will behave entirely differently they will support each other they will participate in develop uh, supporting other people's success so this is important for organizations uh, because organization will develop if all the elements of their uh, their systems and all the elements of their organization work towards that achieving that objective or uh, of uh, their purpose so that is one key element in in this uh, there 
Okay. So, and and we have endorsements now coming up from various leaders. Means we have IBM leader Lau Gasna's uh, statement, which says that I come to see in my time at IBM that culture isn't just one aspect of the game; it is the game. And the problem is that many of us do not still understand that importance, and we see failures after failures because as uh, the we make good strategy, we make a good uh, uh, acquisitions, we make good uh, tools and systems, we buy the best equipment, we buy best machines, but we do not look at that environment in which these will be prosperous. And many of that is because people don't know the importance and they also don't know how to impact that uh, culture. So that's that's something we need to do. And there. So the, the, it, it lot of knowledge has exist now around these topics, but I bring down three important insights which are coming from uh, the lot of research which was uh, done by Shingo Institute over last many, many years. And uh, I've just briefly written here so that I can explain. I wanted earlier to focus only on one, one of these, but now I think I talk about all the three in a brief way and stress more on uh, insight number three uh, to give you more ideas about what how principles affect these behaviors. See, the first insight which, uh, which came out of all the study is that ideal results require ideal behavior. Now, it's very simple statement, uh, but it's very interesting because the way Shingo Institute defines ideal results. So the it, and it's key to understand this. The ideal results are defined as results which are exceptional, which are good, but also sustainable. Okay, so any result which which is like a spike, which becomes good and does not sustain, is not an ideal result. Okay, so you can relate it to your organizations. You have uh, some type of I, manufacturing, say, for example, you make some output today, production was there, very good production. Now you can get that production, but is it sustained? Do you get every day over next six months, one year, or, or it was a spike in the production or quality or cost or delivery or, or uh, it means many, many things which you, the way you measure your excellence. So the ideal results, if you have to get ideal results, which means that you have to not only get the good results, but also sustain the good results, you need ideal behaviors. And ideal behaviors are important because what, what we found out in this research was that you can get good results by a non-ideal behavior or a bad behavior. It means many times we see you need some product to go out of your factory today so you, the, the, the production manager will stand, the director will stand on the line to get his goods ready and ship out. Now that behavior can give you a result in one time, but when people move out, the, the results will not be there. So it's not an ideal result. And their behavior also of the people is not ideal. So that's, that's the linkage between this. And how do we know what are the ideal behaviors is coming from the uh, insight number three. And we'll a little bit more talk about that. Uh, the site, uh, the insight number two is that the purpose and system drive behavior. It, it's it's very very interesting thing means, and this is where you have a lever to drive the behaviors which you want. Means the systems and especially the the consequence management of the behaviors, the systems that encourage the right behaviors, system that discourage uh, non behaviors which you don't want have a big impact on the behavior of the people. Means for for a very long time, means uh, I I've been student of these behaviors, and I used to see means I if I we had our in all our uh, suppose you have a flight from India, and it's a typical example I have quoted many times. Means I used to take a flight from Dubai. I had a in Dubai, everybody was standing in one line. Everybody, same people. The moment they landed in Delhi, we had see we see a completely different behavior from the people. What changed? So it's it's the way you reward, recognize, or uh, 
consequences of the behaviors that also determines your behavior. So the same people with same, given a different system, work very, very differently means uh, there. So the way to get good uh, alignment of behaviors to what you would like to get ideal results is to develop the systems which will reward the behaviors which you want and discourage the behaviors which you don't want. So that is, again, it's it's a lot of theory behind this and a lot of practical examples and uh, cases are there, but this is more or less the uh, knowledge which comes out of that. The third is very important and I would like you to start focusing some on some of these aspects because again you can go google and go to these sites and you can download many things around it but what shingo institute did uh, with along with people like us and with uh, uh, companies like us is to study what the scholars are saying so we studied hundreds of scholars over a period of time means peter sengage uran deming uh, tai chi you know we had Dr. Stephen Covey, uh, we had uh, many, many uh, uh, Eastern, Western people who study the organizations and identify what are, th they have written a lot of work on that. From there, we, we wanted to distill some of the principles, which are like the foundational rules, which are key elements for any organization to become excellent. So I will skip this and I will go to uh, the principles. And based on these principles, they, they started dividing into, earlier we divided into four, some of the uh, old Shingo model last year you will see is has four dimensions, but now we have combined some of these and we have now three dimensions. So principles which go on and excellence in an organization now can be divided into three areas we have people uh, related principles which are like cultural enablers then we have process related uh, enablers uh, which are related to continuous improvement and the purpose related which is enterprise alignment so how do we align uh, everybody in the company to achieve the objective so there are principles and all of these principles uh, or these are domains and out of these domains we have principles so if you see, there are nine principles in this triangle, which you see on the right side. Uh, the, the, the first, if you go down, you will see the cultural enablers. Now this, we have been talking about for many years, the, that are, is a foundation of any excellence in the company, small, big. And I have seen this in my personal means, life as a small child in a very small workshop uh, in, in our family. The foundation was respect every individual and the second principle lead with humility. This cannot be overcoated. Means earlier it was like a soft thing. People would not listen about these things and say no. But now it is upfront. It is on the list of the top principles that go on excellence in, in company. The companies cannot become great. They can improve a little bit, they can get some results, but not sustainable long-term value for their shareholders and service to the clients until they are led by people who have humility. Now, why it is important to have humility is because it's very evident and very much known that uh, the people who work in these organizations have a lot of knowledge. And they can help us improve everything if we listen to them. And the ability to listen to people means that you first try to say, if, uh, at least believe that you have something to listen to and you don't know everything. And that act of actually bringing down yourself to a level where you are humble enough to be able to listen to people, whether it's an operator or a, a, or a small uh, means uh, uh, mystery on a construction site or a or a operator or a nurse in a uh, hospital. You listen to them, you can get insights, and that requires humility. So, we level five leaders are humble leaders. Many of the organizations who are world class, you don't even know the name of their leaders. 
uh, right now. So Toyota, for example, means, and then many other companies, means they are led by people who demonstrate that humility. The other thing is respect for everybody. The companies which do not excel have failed many times in respecting individuals who are there. Everybody together, when they are respected, they give more than what you expect from, from them. We are designed, we are human beings, and we feel when we feel respected, we do more more than what is expected out of, of, of us. So that is there. Out of these two principles, very, very key and very focused for us when we try to improve organizations. The second uh, sort of is uh, about continuous improvement. And these are the principles coming from various methodologies of assuring quality at source means we need, we don't inspect out quality everything we do right from the ceo of the company down to everybody the principle is that you have to work so that you do it right first time and in every environment in every type of whether it's care environment or it is uh, uh, supply chain whether it is manufacturing it's about it processes doing it right first time will think so systems have to be created around that this will define the behaviors because that's the principle that the third insight then we have improved flow and pull coming from lean manufacturing or lean thinking then we have seeking perfection means perfection is something we might never be able to achieve but seeking perfection takes us to the excellence there so the vision has to be like zero defect like zero breakdowns or zero uh, failures or zero, zero uh, sort of mistakes in the company or something. That is a vision. That is what we need to seek uh, continuously. There is a database thing, a very scientific thinking means we take emotions out. We don't make uh, uh, decisions based on gut feelings or don't make decisions based just on uh, our feelings. We based on scientific de- getting data understanding on facts and process and focus on process means that whenever we have issues problems we improve processes not just blame people uh, we find causes not just culprits for the problem so when we improve processes results will improve people will also participate and become happy so these are the five of the principles on there and then there are three principles in the how do we align everybody in the organization uh, to achieve results is called create value for customer, create constancy of purpose, and think systemically. My favorite has been think systemically uh, a lot because we improve individual elements of our operations which do not give results. Means individually optimizing doesn't mean systemically organizing the whole organization. So that's where it comes from. So these are the eight, nine principles which I just present to you. I'm running now out of time. Leave uh, some time for question answer. Um, but these are things you can, if you need information, you can Google, you can get that. Or even if you write to me, maybe I can support you with uh, some more details of where to find information around that. But my request is to please do not just think about your business as tools, systems, and processes and things like that you have to look at other in building an environment in which all of these can prosper and your in innovations can grow your problem solving can happen and your continuous striving to uh, meet customers expectations and your shareholders expectations and that is what will make you really great and it's can it doesn't matter which level of organization we are talking about okay so that is something which I had in mind. Right. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think uh, these are the principles which are being used by some of the best organizations in the world. And, uh, you know, I, I have few questions and obviously then everybody can pitch in. Some of our members, they come from manufacturing industries, manufacturing setups. Some of them have worked with some of the best in class companies as well in the world. And they would have seen or practiced these principles. Uh, one question comes to mind is that, uh, you know, how do you apply these principles in the practical world uh, and specifically from the SME perspective? Because, you know, most of our members, they are from small, medium and large. Some of them are large enterprises as well. 
one thing uh, you know i wanted to ask you is that when you go ahead and implement these principles so what usually is your approach is it understanding the as is system that how exactly they are doing what exactly they are doing today right and uh, and I, and i think there's lot about you know changing that mindset because sometimes uh, you know there are all obstructions here only that you know whether we'll be able to do that or not whether and you spoke about that construction example that you know ours are blue collars they won't really understand how do you really change that how do you really manage that if there's any case study or an example related to related to that that would be great you know that really help us to understand how can we implement in our businesses see uh, it's very well what you said we don't implement actually principles we sort of live those principles as leaders so that people can sort of adopt them it's like in a family we don't start saying uh, such bolna hai truth is there people have to demonstrate if the parents do not speak truth people the children will not speak truth I mean they will understand I mean what you're saying is not what you are meaning there is exactly like that and since you take up this example of construction company and i was with with a, with a personal friend who was talking like this and i was explaining every human being needs respect okay now respect is the fundamental principle now you can what stops you from respecting a mystery in a construction site it's it's about you respecting not about him doing anything else you give respect you get respect i am telling there was issues in this place which people are not following because the when the that this uh, contractor comes in he starts shouting his only job is to disrespect people and make them humiliate them so that he shows his power i said that's not how we do. people are looking at the time when you get out of this place to start working not the other way around so how will you get respect if you do not get respect and that is very difficult it's not about people at in the forefront and adding value for this it's about senior people the people who are managing these operations do not understand that to get people's heart and heads in this game you need to respect and when you respect people's give their all all side and in india it is much more than anywhere in the else means main kehta hu aap peeth pe haath to rakh ke dekho kisi ka kisi ne at least somebody has done something right yesterday right at least put your hand and say thank you buddy you did this why are you so scared that ek mistri ko aaj encourage karega wo to sir pe chad jayega bolte hain but it's it, it, it's not that it's do that and and the second thing which is humility is very important means you need to listen means if you are coming and you find a problem you need to understand that your the your people are capable of telling you what what solutions could be there so it's it's about adopting these principles making sure you then systems are being created which will help encourage the right behavior is the key and it doesn't matter means most of the shingo prizes i have in the last 5 6 years as to hospitals we have a bank which has got the award uh, in the application of these principles we have a financial institution from australia uh, which won the prize 2 years back in this so manufacturing started with manufacturing but no longer we have now uh, a large number of uh, care care in the care environment we have um, the diagnostic centers we have primary health care centers which are adopting these principles to really get the results which they are wanting to so it's 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 not just for this and it's it's about ourselves as leaders to understand and create and i i think it will create a big impact and we have seen many times i gave you example of this construction site but also look at uh, uh, manufacturing sites and look at hospital I means we're talking to a hospital doctor and uh, he was giving an example he said uh i was uh, visiting a ward and i was looking at patients and there were nurses along with me and i prescribed a sort of a, a, a oral medication for a for a patient and i moved ahead suddenly when i crossed two beds i realized yaar wo that this oral medicine is not right i should have injectable i need to inject this medicine to get proper uh, uh, results, yeah. results so i came back and told the nurse that please give an injection not not the oral medication and the nurse said yeah i was thinking the same now he said i am wondering if you were thinking that injection is better why didn't you not tell me right uh, that this is right he said she said no no how can i tell you you are doctor you why would you listen to me now oh. he said i am wondering means 
means if these people who know what is right do not tell me because i have not created that environment in which they can fearlessly yeah, if they yeah. see something happening wrong tell me about it how do i means what means you can imagine how dangerous it could be so absolutely absolutely so the idea is we need as leaders to create environment in there in which our people can at least tell us what is not going right where are the losses happening where are the resources being uh, underutilized or going out and and trust me means all of these people know a lot more of what we know we just right. have to create an environment in which we can listen to them and that's right. the key and then adopt and put systems in place and uh, for the other elements to come in so it's not it's not too difficult but it's difficult because it's about our our way of thinking and mindsets and things like that which which way, which is a big challenge right no i think i think that was very very powerful example and i think some of us can already relate to that uh, that how open or uh, you know how do you really support your team to come and say and share their thoughts because they are the people on the ground in fact they face all the challenges all the time and once we listen to them obviously uh, so uh, you know we'll we'll open it up for all the members uh, you know our friend varun he's building up his organization manufacturing uh, you know organization so varun any thoughts because you come from consulting background as well so any thoughts which comes to your mind uh, would you like to ask no i think uh, morning everyone uh, i think whatever uh, you know singh sahab has uh we know told it is it is basically a summary of all uh, humility is the foundation for uh, you know all the changes and uh, uh, you know all all the culture and all achievements or whatever milestones can bring in and it it has to be led by example uh, that's the crux and the uh, rest everything uh, falls in place so once you know the humility is there uh, you know people uh, are standing behind you once people are standing behind you uh you know the uh, the work start happening once the work starts happening uh processes uh, uh fall in place and systems fall in place and when the systems fall in place then automatically that you know environment uh, uh you know starts happening and everyone is aligned uh, towards a common objective and a single goal uh, towards which the organization is working uh, i i think uh, this is fantastic thank you for sharing all the uh, uh, wisdom uh, rajinder sir